Hi everyone, I'm Sybil Muschik. Welcome to my Shoreline Studio. Now we're going to carry on again with Sarah Barber and Shiler McEwen. If you recall from our first session, they were part of the Jim Cata Club that uh, were successful bidders at an auction that they held. Every year I donate to their worthwhile causes. Now we're going to be working with stencils and not all stencils are created equal. And I want to show you a little bit more about stencils. So we're going to go to our overhead camera and we'll go through some of those ideas. So here are the stencils we're going to be working with today. They are the Laniaki stencils. And they're quite robust as you can see, nice thick plastic. However, because of the thickness, uh, if you're using them directly on a prepared gel plate, you know, with a layer of paint on it, then it may print a little bit out of focus. So I actually suggest you use them with daubers. And I have here a bunch that uh, I usually work with. These are little sponge daubers, have a variety of sizes, and uh, some brushes, more brushes, big brush, and some more sponge daubers, some bigger ones. This is probably for wall art and a really, really big one. There, you can see that. So, now some stencils are a little bit more complex. These are the American Deco stencils. They have quite a bit of uh, interesting patterns. These are sort of um, like gears and things of that nature. I haven't been that kind to it, as you can see, uh, probably trying to clean it and it doesn't work very well. So we've lost a little bits and pieces. I could cut them, of course. This is a 12 by 12. Here's another one, again, uh, American Deco. I really like this one a lot. It prints beautifully. Again, uh, good thicknesses of plastic. Um, the design is not quite so delicate, so the bits and pieces stay together, which is quite good. Now we have the Martha Stewart stencils, and they come with a plastic backing because they're sticky. And this is quite a lovely pattern, as you can see. And you can use it as uh, an actually a texture plate. So you can just impress your image right down straight onto the gel plate. Or you can take the little plastic off the back here. It just comes off. And then use it as a regular stencil. Then there's this one. It's the Heidi Schwab stencil. And it is more like a silk screen. It does come off, but if, as you can see, it's on a kind of mesh. This is not transparent here. And uh, it will work very well. The design works beautifully no matter how you use it. And you can put it straight on the gel plate uh, with ink on it already, or you can roller uh, paint on, on over top. It works beautifully either way. Now, when you're finished with it, what I do is I put it back in its little case. And if you'll notice, I split the case at the side, and it's much easier to put it in that way. And then I have a little bit of uh, washi tape that just holds it all together quite nicely. When I'm finished with my stencils, I have a little case that I put them in. And uh, as you can see, and it fits in really quite nicely. And I usually label the outside so I know which stencils are in here. You know, really the best things to use are your own stencils. And uh, they're quite fun to make. Um, these are snowflakes that I made last year. And of course, snowflake season is coming up pretty rapidly. And they hold up for quite a few printings. So, and they could be made out of a variety of papers. Of course, in order to make a snowflake, you have to do many folds. So the papers have to be not too stiff. Um, I often use butcher paper 
it holds up really well. And of course, you can use other materials. Um, this is a plastic. You can use a, a mineral paper. You can use Tyvek. And uh, there's a whole variety of things you can make stencils from. And of course, you could probably make your own texture plates. Also, you can use found objects such as these uh, lovely little doilies. Uh, they come in either white paper or in uh, this uh, coated uh, silver. And they have lovely little rose patterns on them. And you can use bits and pieces of them. Uh, you don't have to use the whole whole thing at any one time. And lastly, our doily, plastic doily. Now these are extremely robust and often I don't even bother cleaning them. It's becoming quite brilliant in its own right and a work of art. So there you have it with a few of the stencils. Uh, let's rejoin Sarah Barber and Shiler McEwen to see how they make out with the stencils. Now exercise two, we are actually working with a stencil. So I want you to look through these stencils very quickly. Yes, you could probably wipe it down. Um, there's your sprayer. I should do that too. And I'm just going to pick a quick one for me. And uh, The last time I did a demonstration with, with these stencils, I failed miserably. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> but we will see what happens today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it in the center and just see what that looks like. Okay, again, I'm going to use a, a nice color. How about some transparent red oxide, iron oxide? And I'm going to do a two-tone. It's not quite a rainbow roll, but and I'll show you how to do it. Maybe a yellow. And I'll print this one on white. Now I might have a little bit too much. You see that? It's probably too much. So what you do in that case is you just take it off. Put it on the other plate and of course if that's not enough then I can retrieve it so bring it on nice and even and yeah, I'm going to prayer this off again because what I want is uh, for the yellow not to mix too much And I'm just looking to see that the paint is evenly mixed here. There's a few little... This is more of an opaque paint, so it has... Um, maybe a bit of titanium in it. So I'm just going to... Just move it off again. smoothing it out a little bit. Now we're going to place a stencil and I have to see which is up. Which is up, you guys? Should the oh. dragonfly go down or should it go up? I don't know. Anyway, we'll make it go up. And then, now we take another sheet of paper and very carefully take some of the background out. Um, the, see those that are like little mask out areas. Mm. You won't be able to remove all of it, but you'll remove some of it so that it's a lighter color. That's basically what we're doing. 
You can use other paper. You can use... Um, paper towel. Sometimes paper towel has an interesting pattern to it, so that might be fun. Okay. Now in the background, I'm going to do other things. I think I have some um, other textures I could do. Maybe we'll just do some See what that looks like. And we can wipe that off. So we'll carefully remove that. Bless you. Thank you. And this also will print. It's most of the ink off too. It doesn't print much, but it gets most of the ink off, and that's a good thing. Sprayer off again, and I'll use our thing in. We should be able to get all those nice lines. Bubble wrap is really interesting stuff to mm. use. It has little circles and I've got it here on the table somewhere. Very oriental looking. Mm -hmm. So you can see where I've taken the paint off. Mm. And, uh, and there's a white outline. I don't know if you're seeing that. So, and then I don't think we'll get anything on the ghost print. So, take another sheet. Something like this, um, I would do pen and ink in there to oh, right. really bring out the it. pattern. Yeah. And uh, Posca pens are, are really good. See, I like really defined yes. art. That's yeah. just me. That's no, I yeah. think that's most people. You're, it's too subtle and uh, it needs a little bit of extra work. I could do another print over top of that. If we had registered it, then we could have done that, right? Mm. So we'll, we will do that on the next pass. So again. I can see the corner, so it's printing at least the first layer. And very subtle for the ghost print. All right. And definitely would need enhancement. Pencil, yeah. pen and ink. That's a nice thing about these prints is, you know, there's other media you can use with them. Yeah. Okay, on to you. <sighs> I have bubble wrap for you. Oh, excellent. Right. Which one? Oh, the heart one. What are you going to do? Oh. Shelly, you probably need a bit more paint there. Okay. Is that the crimson? Yep. Or the... That's the crimson hue. This one? Yep. Right. I have a pyro red here. Ooh, if you want more of a bright, like a cad type of red. Is there a purple? I have a purple here. It's diazazine purple. 
It's a nasty sounding name, but it's a lovely <laughs> color. Okay. And not easy to pronounce. I'm worried that the paint is drying for you. What you can do is you can add, this is a golden open gel. And if you want to thin out your color a little bit, have it still, um, it's just a little more transparent. You can add a tiny bit to that and it'll roll it out. So, this is... so that's like a gel thinner? Yes. It's an acrylic medium. So. Oh, I switched brayers. I wasn't happy with how the big one was rolling. Do you want another brayer? No, I got, I'm using the little one. Okay. And that's actually... Was that working better for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. That will be a nice, like a graded wash in watercolor. Oh, you've got an anchor. Okay. My yeah. husband's family is from Nova Scotia. Well, there you go. You can use it if you need to use another piece of paper. It will take off some of the paint like on the outside of it and uh, that might be interesting. Just put a sheet down. Yeah, just put it right down and then... Like that? Yep. And then just lift off where you want it to, to lift off, say around the, the stencil. And again, you can lift off within the stencil if you want. Bright color. Oh, yes, and I was just taking the color out. Yeah, take some of the color off the ends here maybe with your bubble wrap and then leave the hearts because they'll be nice and graphic. <laughs> it's easy for me to see from here where it's heading, right? <laughs> hmm. Yeah. See, I think this is going to look really cool like this. Yep, so either white or another color. We have several colors. White. Wait, that's good. And then where do I put the white? Oh, with white paper. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's part of the, <laughs> the ambiance of gel plate printing. Well, it doesn't matter what type of painting. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm hopeless. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just taking that off. Uh, and it just shows that you're a true artist and, you know, you're getting right into your materials. When I was it's doing, a lot, when I used to do a lot of painting, I'd end up putting it in my hair, under my face, because I'd just be working away on it. So I'm taking a print now, aren't I? Yes, you are. From just the... Oh, you can this way with just the... Yes, you can. And then take, and the then take off it off and, and then do it again. Yeah. Do you have enough paper for the next one? Oh. oh, yes. 
Oh, very nice. That's beautiful. And then take off the stencil. Take it off it and do it again. Yes. I like that. Actually, show, really it, like show it, it to the camera. The cute the boys back there. Oh, good thing I'm having another one. Yep. <laughs> Yes, you're gonna have to repress so that the paint goes to the next level. These stencils are nice hard plastic. I have stencils so they're far more delicate and I don't usually clean them. Mm. Oh, good yes. When you take the stencil. Yeah, oh. I knew it was going to work good that way. Good. Okay, go spread. underwater. It's definitely underwater. How's that? Yeah. You've got that nice graded tone. Let's well, see if I was to do that one again I would put a little bit of white here. Yes. There. Yeah. Of course <clears throat> by doing it you get more ideas and then you do a series, right? That's yeah. the way to work. When I do a darker one and a little bit of lighter yes. one have an yes. ombre series. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I hope you've I've convinced you that <laughs> Gel plate printing is worthwhile and a lot of fun. Oh, it and it's, is. it's so immediate, you get an instant gratifying result. Well, that's yeah. when you, I, I love working with acrylic anyways, yes. Yes. just because, oh, I'm not happy with this, you paint it again. Yeah. Keep working on it. Exactly. There's, there's times I've been working on stuff for a while. Yeah. All right, well, put it in da, the pile. Da, da, da. There we go. Ooh. So did that one turn out? Yes. Okay. Um, what is that? Yeah, so... Mm, when it's... you took it off, maybe? I don't know. We have some interesting accidentals there. Oh, I've got the bubbles too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a 13. Yeah. <laughs> Unlucky for some. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. Wasn't that fun with Sarah Barber and Shiler McEwen? They're such good sports. In the future, we'll be doing other videos on more gel plate printmaking, such as with botanicals and then other media. I hope you'll join me then. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>